Hello everyone, today we're going to check out Azure Active Directory AD Sync and how to actually use Azure Active Directory AD Connect to synchronize our on-site users into the cloud. This is actually only one way that we can actually do this synchronization. The second way we can do this is through AD Cloud Sync and we'll be discussing that in a future episode. I hope you enjoy the demo and let's get straight into it. So we have our office location over here and our office location is going to have things inside it like our domain controllers that are running Azure, oh sorry not Azure, running Active Directory Domain Services. This is the old thing that you're using on site. This is when we're using things like LDAP and we're using old port 338, old port 389. Now we're going to have users that are actually inside this like for example Bob. And what we really actually want to do is we want to have up here in the cloud, we have our Azure AD environment. Now our Azure AD environment is going to be used to authenticate various different things, like for example, to authenticate the Azure portal, like for example, to authenticate things like Office 365, to authenticate things like Slack and Salesforce and anything else that you have actually hooked into your Azure Active Directory environment. And what we want to do is we want to take Bob's account from here and put Bob's account essentially up here in Azure AD. So we need to sync it. One of the tools that we can use to synchronize that, in fact, there's two different ways of doing this, um, but the first tool is something called AD Connect. This is a slightly older way of doing something now, but it works perfectly fine. AD Connect needs to hook into your local environment and needs to hook into your Azure environment up here. It needs some permissions to do that. For example, this connection here actually needs a global admin connection. And this connection down here actually needs an enterprise admin connection. Now, don't worry, these two accounts are, well, very highly privileged. But they are only used temporarily. Uh, they used to just create a couple of sync accounts to get this actually working. There is two different ways that you need to be aware of with the AZ-104 to be able to synchronize. There is something called pass-through sync, and there is another thing called hash-based sync. There is ADFS sync, but we don't need to worry about that for the AD AZ-104. This Bob account down here though is an old style account and this Bob account up here is essentially a new style account um, running on OAuth. Now that means that when these two accounts are synchronized, it's not actually copied, okay? Uh, what it's actually doing is it's technically creating a brand new account. It's reading the attributes of the Bob account down here and building a brand new Bob account up here with different attributes because Azure Active Directory and Local Active Directory are two completely different things, okay? They are similar to each other as a potato is similar to a pineapple, all right? So we actually need to create a brand new account. So let's go and set all this stuff up. So here I am in a domain controller and I have my on-site Active Directory environment here, as you can see. And I also have over here, I actually have my Azure Active Directory environment with a default primary domain and a nice little Azure AD Premium P2 license. And our objective is to get people from here and insert them into here. So we can see my existing users at the moment I do not have many things inside here. In fact, I only have a couple of accounts. I have an, a service account and an MOD administrator account. And both of those, notice they are not on-prem synced. So if I drop back here, what I want to do is I want to go into AD Connect and I need to download this AD Connect tool. Notice there is actually two different ways of doing this here. There is AD Cloud Sync and there is Connect Sync. We are going to discuss Connect Sync at the moment and we'll discuss Cloud Sync in the future. So if we go to AD Connect Sync here, we have a few options and we want to go and download this AD Connect client, okay? So I'll download this AD Connect client, pull that down. Internet Explorer has been retired as of June 15th. It's good to know, just in case I was planning on using Internet Explorer for anything at all. So let's open up this Azure AD Connect and get this thing installing. It does take a couple of minutes to initialize, initialize the installation. That doesn't take all that long. 
So my Azure AD Connect utility is currently installed. I'm going to accept these license agreements, click continue, click customize, and you'll notice these are some of the settings that we can add. I'm not going to use an existing SQL server or an existing service account. I'm going to let it create it all itself. This does require the use of something called SQL Express, but it will actually install that automatically for us. So we'll wait for this installation to complete. Shouldn't take all that long. Okay. Now this is complete, we have been given a few options. The two options that we're really bothered about here is password hash synchronization and pass-through synchronization. I'm going to choose password hash synchronization for my current uh, installation, and we're going to connect to Azure AD. I'm going to pop in these usernames and passwords, and we're going to click Next. While that's sorting itself out, we're going to drop back to the whiteboard really quickly and discuss pass-through and hash-based sync. If you do a hash-based synchronization, the main thing that happens here is that Bob's key, i.e. his password, actually gets synchronized up here to Azure Active Directory. That means if Bob is over here and attempts to log into a service, Azure Active Directory can authenticate Bob and return it directly to him. On the other hand, this might not be part of something that you can do because of compliance. So if we just take that queue off, Pass-through authentication is slightly different. The key never leaves the on-site system. So in this case, if Bob actually wanted to authenticate Office 365 and needed to authenticate his account, that's actually going to zoom all the way back down here to complete that authentication and then pass that back to Bob. Therefore, the key never leaves the system if you need to be completely compliant. For most people, hash-based synchronization is perfectly fine, and to have Microsoft actually have your passwords up here is not too much of a problem. So let's drop back here. Uh, we're going to connect adatum.com, which is our on-site Active Directory environment, and we're going to pop in the enterprise admin username and password here. This is going to make the connection to our on-site systems, as well as our connection to our Azure AD systems inside the cloud. So let's wait for that to synchronize. I'm going to continue without matching all UPN suffixes. All this is basically telling me is that my UPNs here, adatum.com, are not quite lining up with actually what I've got here in Azure Active Directory, which is if I drop back to Azure AD, you can see that that is this default address down here. m365x34647484.onmicrosoft.com, which is a temporary domain. In reality, you would synchronize your actual domains and you would add a custom domain name here to your Azure Active Directory that would kind of line up with what you've actually got on site. So we can choose to synchronize people in a number of different ways. If I chose next, next, next at this point, I would synchronize everybody. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to subselect via organizational unit. I'm just going to grab everybody in the IT organizational unit here. You could also uniquely identify users with different sections as well. So you can use specific attributes. Say, for example, you could use specific locations or what a lot of people actually tend to do is actually use the filtering section over here and synchronize people based on a group. So you go and select a group like, for example, Office 365 or cloud users and synchronize everybody in there and leave other people on site. One of the things we do need to be aware of is making sure that this is actually turned on password hash synchronization. That means um, one of these things that we need to turn on is password write back so that our passwords that exist inside the cloud actually get written back to on site if somebody changes their password in something like Office 365. So let's configure that and we'll start that synchronization process. And that's all completed. Now we should have to wait for a few minutes, maybe 10 or 15 minutes for this initial synchronization to occur and we should be able to see those users reflected inside Azure Active Directory in the cloud. So we can now see all of our users are currently synchronized and our on-premise sync is set to yes here. Now there is one other thing to mention. If we go into somebody like Abby Skinner here, and this does actually depend on your on-site configurations, and I edit the properties of Abby Skinner, you'll notice there's a number of different things that have been synchronized down here. But there is also something very important that isn't. If you watch my previous videos, you'll know that the usage location here is incredibly important to be set. If this isn't set, a bunch of things don't work. Things like multi-factor authentication. 
If I drop into licenses for Abby Skinner here and click add licenses and attempt to add something like a Microsoft Enterprise Mobility Security E5 license, notice my license assignment has failed. Now, if I go into the error for why that's actually failed here, you'll notice it cannot be assigned to a user without a usage location specified. So all of these synchronized users need to have their usage location specified for them to actually even receive an Office 365 license. Now, if you go into each individual user and go into the properties of each individual user and then scroll through to set the usage location to wherever you need, like, for example, United Kingdom and save that, this might take an exceedingly long time for your um, entire environment. So you want to use something a little bit like this, a very basic Azure PowerShell script, just to go and get Azure AD users and to actually say set Azure AD user with a user object ID and usage location. If you want to set the usage location for everybody that you synchronize at once, we could also actually use this set AD user um, by not doing a get all true we could do get ad user with some filters like for example to filter if they are on-site synced or maybe to filter things like their existing group memberships so that kind of concludes how to actually do a basic synchronization with azure ad connect into azure active directory from our on-site active directory domain services And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.